Laminate flooring is a beautiful type of flooring that's easy to install. It's also one of the most durable, scratch-resistant types of flooring available. Laminate flooring is a great choice if you want the look of real hardwood at a more affordable cost. It's available in a variety of colors to complement virtually all design styles. This guide will cover each step of how to safely and simply install laminate flooring in any room of your home. To start off, we'll discuss the steps you can take to prepare your space and the tools you'll need. Start by gathering all the necessary tools and materials. You'll need a laminate cutter, jam saw, carpenter square, utility knife, hammer, floor installation kit, level, tape measure, pencil, and some clamps. Make sure the floor installation kit includes spacers and a tapping block. They're essential for leaving proper expansion gaps and for tapping your new flooring into place without damaging it. You'll also need the flooring itself, the underlayment to go underneath, a vapor barrier for high moisture or below ground spaces, and duct tape or silver underlayment tape. To reinstall your baseboard and molding after installation, you'll need finishing nails, caulk, and a nail gun. If you're missing any tools, all are available to buy and most are available to rent at Home Depot. Before starting the installation process, open the laminate packaging and lay the planks in the room where they're going to be installed for at least 48 hours. They need to acclimate to that space's temperature and humidity to avoid any warping. When you're ready to begin installing, make sure you put on proper safety gear. The best safety gear for this job includes safety goggles, work gloves, and knee pads. Step one, preparing your subfloor. Laminate flooring is ready to install if the base floor is clean and smooth. Remove the existing flooring and check for a completely flat subfloor with your level. If you have a concrete subfloor, fix any chips or dips with a patching compound. For wood subfloors, remove protruding nails, patch cracks, sand down humps, and replace any damaged boards. If you're installing the flooring below ground level or in a room with high moisture, such as a kitchen, lay down a vapor barrier before you put down underlayment. Step two, measuring your flooring for installation. To decide what direction the plank should be installed in, consider placing them parallel to the longest wall in the room. If there's a focal point in the room, like a fireplace, you can also arrange planks parallel to that. Next, you need to cut your planks to fit your room, which means you need to do some measuring. You'll start by measuring the width of the room. That is, the measurement that runs perpendicular to how you want your planks aligned. You need to allow a gap for your flooring to expand, so subtract 3 fourths of an inch from your measurement. Write that down. To determine how many rows of flooring you'll need, divide your measurement by the width of one of your planks. Write that number down too. This is the number of rows you'll be installing. For most rooms, this won't divide perfectly, so you need to do a bit more math to find out where to cut the last boards. You can figure out the width of the last row by calculating the width of all the other rows and subtracting that from the initial room measurement. To do that, take the number of rows you calculated a minute ago and round it down to a whole number. Multiply that number by the width of a single plank and you'll get the width of the area highlighted on your screen. Subtract that number from the measurement you took of the room and you'll get the width of your last row. Remember one final thing during this step. If your last row is going to be less than three and a half inches wide, you should trim plank width from both sides of the room. That will keep any one row from being too narrow. To get the right measurements for those first and last rows, just add the width of your last row to the width of a full plank and divide the result by two. This calculation will give you the width for both your first row and your last row, which keeps your floor looking even. Step three, preparing doorways for installation. It's much easier to cut the trim around your doorways than it is to cut the flooring to match the door's irregular shape. Once you cut the door frame, the flooring will just slip under it, leaving a more finished look in the end. To make this kind of cut on your door frame, first, stack a plank of flooring on top of a section of the underlayment and lay them next to the door's molding. Trace a guiding line along the surface of the molding with a pencil to show you where the cut should be. Use a jam saw to make the cut and remove the excess wood. Step four, installing your underlayment over your subfloor. If your laminate planks didn't come with an attached underlayment, roll out two rows of the underlayment and place them next to each other. Trim each piece to the length of the room with a utility knife. Use your tape or the underlayment's adhesive to bind the strips together. Step five, laying the first row of laminate flooring. Start the first row of flooring by placing a plank with the tongue side facing out. Install the second plank next to the first by aligning the tongue into the groove and pressing the plank down to snap it in place. To allow for the expansion of the flooring over time, remember to place 3 8 inch spacers along the wall as you go to leave a consistent gap. This is the method you can use to install every plank of laminate. Just keep aligning and snapping the planks into place. When you approach the end of the first row, cut the final plank to the perfect length. 
remember to leave an expansion gap at the end of this plank as well. Before cutting any of the planks, check the cutting instructions for your particular flooring product. Try to cut with the finished side up and use duct tape to mark the plank more easily and reduce splintering. Step six, the second row and beyond. When you start the second row, you need to start with a shorter or longer plank than you did with the first row. This will stagger the seams, resulting in a beautiful, natural look and giving the floor stability. The vertical seam should always be staggered at least a foot from any adjacent seam. As you install the second row, hold the long side of your plank at an angle and feed the tongue into the groove of the first row. Press down and snap the plank into place. Be prepared to wiggle it around. You need to position it for a smooth, tight snap with no gaps. Some brands suggest you use a tapping block to knock the plank into place. Continue the rows in the same way until the room is complete. Step seven, the finishing touches. Once the laminate has been installed, remove the spacers and install matching threshold, baseboard, and quarter round molding to the walls using finishing nails. Caulk the edges of the baseboard and molding to give everything a smooth, finished look. Remember, the Home Depot has tools, materials, instructions, and expert advice to help you get the job done. Enjoy installing your new laminate flooring.